How do I gain more confidence? It starts with yourself, man. You gotta start diving into those things that you are afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you wanna do is go back to, or what gave you confidence is that happy spot. No, what gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own. Realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence is not being afraid. It's overcoming the fear. I used to stutter severely bad. So right now, I don't know how many people are gonna watch this. You know what gives me confidence? Is knowing I no longer care if I sit and start stuttering to you. That's what gives me confidence, is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them and facing and facing pretty soon like this. You know what, man, this is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. Mm -hmm. That's where it's getting built. But people, they want an easier answer. There has to be an easier way. There's not. I'm sorry. I searched for it my entire life. <laughs> Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You've got Michael Jordan level genius at something. So today, let's live your best belief life and learn how to have confidence. Rule number two, hold your ego in check with Ed Milet. I want to start out today's show by just reminding you of something about you, because maybe no one's told you in a little while. You were born to do something great with your life. You're supposed to do something special and you're gonna. I can promise you that you have all the potential in the world within you. And I know the rest of the world is probably telling you constantly to be average, to be ordinary. You know, there's different haters you have in your life. There's people who put you in your box. There's people who overlook you that make you feel invisible. And it's important that you hear from me that that's not who you are. And by the way, you're not even who you've already been in your life. Your past does not equal your future. Your present does not equal your future. And I just want to remind you officially that you can do something great with your life and that you're destined to do something great with your life and that you were born for a reason. So important that you know that, that you hear that from me today and that you begin to believe it about yourself. Because if you don't believe that about yourself, there's no chance it's going to happen. You can't achieve something in your life that you don't believe strongly, certainly, that you can achieve. And I know that I find many of you today, some of you are listening to this today, you've got momentum in your life and things are going well and you're looking for a key or you wanna hear about a mistake you might make that you can miss because I warn you about it. And I'm gonna give you all those things you know that on every program. But I know there's many of you that arrive here today, you're just not in the, in the groove. Things aren't going great. Maybe you're in a down cycle in your life. Maybe there's some letdowns and some hurts that are happening right now and maybe a little bit of um, you know a little melancholy little anxiety little fear maybe all the way to some depression and I just want to be that person who reminds you that you can do something special and that you're going to and that you have everything you need within you right now to make your life great and you can turn it around at any time you decide to you know what you allow is what's going to continue in your life I put out a post about this several weeks ago it's hard to accept this but what's happening in our lives we're allowing it to happen and to some extent, we almost believe we deserve it because we produce in our life what we really believe we're worth, what we really believe we deserve. And it doesn't, it's hard to accept that because it seems coincidental, you know, that the wrong person entered our life or there was a business setback or our car broke down or, you know, our company went out of business or whatever it might be. One of your clients just quit and changed their mind. And it seems coincidental, but you really truly are getting out of your life what you believe you're worth, what you believe you deserve and you're allowing it to happen. And I'm gonna challenge you today to stop that. Stop allowing it and know that you deserve better. And so we're gonna talk about something very ironic today that doesn't seem connected to it, but it's absolutely connected to it, and that's ego. See, the truth is ego is always false. Ego is always something that raises its head when we're insecure, when we're fearful. Um, if you meet people that you think are egomaniacs that are constantly bragging about themselves, these are the most insecure people that you know. They're the most fearful people that you know. They're the most scared and they're usually the least happy. And so, but I'm gonna say something to you. I want you to consider as I go through ego today, I know you think, wow, I'm so down on myself. How could I have an ego? It's actually the people that are down on themselves that actually have their ego materialize and show up more often than they think. And it's their ego that may actually be holding them back. You think, wow, how could someone with low self-esteem have a big ego? Well, trust me, they do. And so egos are not part of people with high self-esteem. The people in my life that are the most self-confident typically don't have big egos. 
And so I want to talk to you about that today. By the way, I'm covering this today like many things I cover because it's something I struggle with. My ego will step forward often in my life, and it usually steps forward when I'm the most scared. It could be when I'm achieving. I'm starting to be pretty full of myself, right? But a lot of times when you're achieving and you're full of yourself, what's really happening in your mind is you're afraid you're going to fall down. You're afraid you're going to lose something. You're afraid there's going to be a setback. So often our friends, where we see their ego, is when they're doing good. Or she, she thinks she looks so good, she's showing herself. Actually, she doesn't think she looks good, and she's looking for validation from other people. You guys that have a friend, you know, he's really winning, he's making a lot of money, he's just not the same, he's got a big ego all of a sudden. You'd be surprised. That money he's making, that car he's driving now, he's so afraid he's going to lose it. He's so scared. He so believes his results have exceeded who he really is. He's so out over his skis that that ego shows up because he's afraid. When you see ego, know it usually means fear. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. So we're going to talk about just recognizing our ego when it shows up. Because for me, either someone else points it out to me, close to me, or I see it in myself. If you have to wait around for other people to tell you, hey, your ego's out of control, it's too late usually. So we've got to be able to see our ego when it rears its head, be aware of it, and it loses its power over us. We can go back to being our real selves, which is point one today. You can't love yourself if you're not being yourself. You can't love yourself if you're not being yourself. And when our ego shows up, in a minute I'm gonna show you some not so subtle ways egos show up, and you're gonna see what I mean about maybe your ego is present. But remember this, when ego shows up, we're not ourselves. We're not connected to God. In other words, if you can let go of your ego, you can let God in. When you can let go of your ego, you can let your real confidence in. When you let go of your ego, you can go really become who you were born to be. And so oftentimes, this is so important you get, you may be losing right now because of your ego. Because of your ego. Because you're not feeling good about yourself. Wouldn't the ultimate version of you not brag, not boast, not tell stories about the past, not worry about what other people thought about you, right? Take criticism very well. All the things that we've discussed today. The ultimate version of you would have none of those things, wouldn't he or she? And that would be the removal of your ego. I believe the way we remove our ego is we love ourselves and we believe in ourselves, and that way we know ourselves. And so what I wanna challenge you to do today is just to start to give yourself a little bit more credit. And just know when you see these symptoms arising in your life, these are indications your ego's out of control. And check yourself when it happens. If you have people in your life who embody these symptoms, it's often easy to see the ego things that really repel us in our life, but the fact of the matter is for me, every single time in my life when my ego gets the better of me, I have a setback. So listen to me, it's very dangerous to lead with your ego because I'm telling you, you're getting ready for a setback in your life. Where do my setbacks come from in my life? I'm gonna tell you where I have setbacks. People ask me, how do I get out of my slump? How do I break the habit that I'm in? And I'm gonna tell you what it is for me because it's connected to ego. For me, I started to think I had it so figured out when things were going good that I stopped working on myself. I stopped reading the books. I stopped listening to the podcast. I stopped improving myself. And when you do that stuff, the poor result doesn't show up as you're doing it. The poor result shows up 90 to 120 days later. So that's the problem. The failure or the setback is delayed by like 90 to 120 days in everything we do. So in business, if you're really successful right now and you got to a certain point, but you stopped the very activities that got you there, you don't fail the next day. 90 to 120 days from now, you pay the price in your life, don't you? You didn't do the work you were supposed to do, and so three, four months later, all of a sudden, business is down again. So the negative result always trails the negative behavior by about three to four months. For me, my happiness level or my confidence level, I always, I got it going, and then I stop reading books. I stop listening to the right stuff. I stop the right associations. It didn't happen immediately, but 90 to 120 days later, now my ego's out of control again. And so where my ego rears its head for me is I begin to think I got it figured out. I think it got it going. I believe my own press clippings and I stop doing the things that are going to get me to the next level and three to four months later I go, man, I'm in a slump. Man, there's a setback right now. What the heck happened? What happened, dummy Ed Milet, is 90 to 120 days ago you stopped doing the things required to win. And so the truth is, where you are right now, I love you, brother or sister. I want you to win. I opened up today by telling you you're supposed to do something great with your life. But in order for that to happen, you have to do the great things now because the positive results will trail by six months to a year. So negatives come get us 90 to 120 days, but positives don't end up showing up sometimes for six months to a year or longer. It's kind of like when you first start to eat well, you might get a little bit improvement, then it levels off and you're like, man, I'm eating well, I'm working out, why isn't my body changing? Because the positive result is six months to a year away. 
That's why. But if you stop eating well, if you stop working out, you're 60 to 90, 120 days, your body's bad again. Same with our lives. If we're doing something great with our life, it's going to take us six months to a year to see the positive result. And so don't let your ego get in the way of saying, man, I'm doing all this stuff and it's not working. There's a delayed gratification coming. The same time, if you are winning right now, don't stop doing the things that got you where you are because you're only 90 to 120 days away from a setback. This is how the ego gets us. And so I want to remind you in conclusion, you're supposed to do something great with your life. You're supposed to contribute. You're supposed to win. But that starts with today loving yourself which is believing in yourself, okay? You can't be yourself if you don't love yourself, and you can't love yourself if you don't believe in yourself. And so today, start to love yourself again. I'm not talking about self-love. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, some thought, I love me, I love me. You know, Stuart Smalley, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough. Gosh darn it, people like me. That's gonna get you nowhere. Do things that are in congruence with who you really are. Do things that are the removal of your ego. You know what says you have no ego? You're willing to do the work every single day on yourself and in your business even though there's no result. That shows no ego. Ego is, why would I keep doing it? There's no result. Or ego is, I got it going, I don't need to do it anymore. You wanna know you don't have an ego? You wanna know you got your act together? You're doing the work right now to show how much you love yourself, how much you believe in yourself, knowing the delayed gratification is coming six months to a year or maybe longer from now. I'm here to challenge you to start living like you love yourself, living like you believe in yourself because you can't love yourself if you're not being yourself and the real self, the real you, takes all the steps to care for you, all the steps to improve you, all the steps to grow you. So you know you love you, you know you believe in you when you begin treating you like that. Rule number three, practice self-acceptance with Brendan Burchard. You're always hearing about this concept in personal development and spiritual development of acceptance. You know, the need that we must accept our lives, we must accept the difficulties of our life, we must accept and honor the struggles that we face, and we must accept a lot of things that we don't even like or approve of. But how the hell do you do that? You know, have you ever heard someone says, well, it's time for you to accept something, and you get upset at them because you don't like the thing that you're struggling with? And how do you tell somebody to accept, them, accept something from their past when it was difficult? Somebody was mean to them, abused them, treated them bad, a bad incident happened, you lost somebody that you loved. I mean, it can be pretty flippant when someone says, well, just practice some self-acceptance, dude. Except you and I both know that they are usually right. You know, is there something that you know you had to deal with in your past, but you haven't dealt with it? Is there? something going on right now that's troubling you and it's causing so much stress and overwhelm, but it doesn't go away. It's always gonna be there. Well, then this might be a good time to think about this power of self-acceptance and this extraordinary ability we have in our mind and in our heart to deal with things that life has dealt to us. And so let's talk about that a little bit because I know it's hard to hear this, but I also think this might be your next breakthrough. When I work with a lot of executives or a lot of high-flying people who are just extraordinarily capable and confident, but they're always stressed, they're always upset, acceptance is one of their ways out. When people you know, are trying to become more mindful and, and thoughtful and present in the world, try that without more self-acceptance. You just sit there and get upset, right? So. There's a couple of tools, a couple of simple things to think about. Number one is just defining self-acceptance for you as a power. It, it's time to develop that, it's a weaponry in life. When you can accept things, you're stronger than others. Like if somebody's sitting there and they're screaming at you and being mean and being rude, when you take it personally and you're not accepting the reality of the situation and all you wanna do is fight and fight and argue and argue, that's where people get in relationships where they're fighting over and over and over and over again because they can't accept that, that maybe that person, that's their reality. Sometimes you have to accept other people's position in life without trying to change them as much as you have to accept yourself without trying to change yourself, as much as you have to accept the past without having to try to change the past. So let's talk maybe a little about how you could do that. What's, what's the process for that? The first thing is defining self-acceptance for you not as approval, Right? Of course you don't approve the person screaming at you. Of course you don't approve the bad situation that happened in the past or the bad medical report. Of course you don't accept the fact that sometimes life isn't what you want. So stop thinking it's about approval. Acceptance isn't about approval. Acceptance is about peace. 
It's learning to be at peace with what is, even if you don't like it, and especially if you can't change it. I'll give you an example. Uh, some of you all know I lost my father in 2009 to acute myeloid leukemia. When he got that diagnosis, it really tore through our family because, you know, my dad and all, we were just all so close and we love him so much. And it was a, uh, you know, a diagnosis that he was going to pass away very soon. From his diagnosis to his death was only 59 some days. And so it was hard to accept that that was what was going to happen, that we were going to lose someone we loved because especially he hadn't been sick. All of a sudden he just got sick and they found, well, you, leukemia is taking your body out of nowhere and then he was gone. And we had to accept that that was part of the process. It doesn't mean that he didn't fight and we didn't try to find everything we could do for him. You know, in that amount of time, he did. He fought the good fight. He, he went through three different treatments of chemo. He tried everything, tried everything. And he's, you know, had been a 21 year uh, Marine. He'd been through it all. He'd been through Vietnam in three different tours. He'd been shot up. He'd been, he was a strong guy and he, he fought, but he also, was almost like that peaceful warrior. You know what I mean? He was at peace either way. He was gonna do his best, but he was gonna accept the outcome that God or the universe placed in his path at that time of his life. And it gave me strength, trying to be the son to, to cope with the situation, trying to be there, to, to see someone going through struggle. And as much as they're struggling and fighting it or honoring it, to see them accept the path, right? To accept your hardships, to go, okay, this is the path that I have right now. God, universe, whatever, it put it in front of me. I'm gonna do my darndest. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be present. I'm gonna engage it. I'm not gonna run. I'm not gonna avoid it, but I'm also not gonna hate it. I'm not gonna add negative fuel to a negative situation. Instead, I'm going to peacefully and persistently give my best to deal with this at my best right now. I'm not gonna hate the process, be mad at the process. I accept that this is the challenge the universe has given me right now. Let me see what I can do. And that's a much more positive mindset than avoiding it because, you know, avoidance is, is a great short-term strategy to avoid pain and discomfort, but avoidance is also a long-term strategy to guarantee suffering, right? To avoid dealing with what we have to in life, that's the opposite of acceptance. You know, it's about engage with it. Do your best, don't hate the process. That's acceptance too, right? I think another way to look at acceptance is through the lens of trust. Trust that you are capable. Trust that things will get better. Trust that this too shall pass. Trust that whatever is here, not only has been put here, but is, it is something that you can deal with. If you survive it, then there was a reason. You learned something, you developed something, you will get better over time, even if right now it sucks, even if it's been painful, even if you're sad about it. Many of you know I also had a brain injury in 2011 that was incredibly difficult. It left a two year just swath of pain in my life. You know, I, it was very difficult um, time when I was trying to overcome a brain injury, trying to get back in the game, trying to build my business and my career, trying to write books, do all these things you see me do. It was bad timing too, right? I mean, it was just all around bad. But all I could do is go, okay, I will repair myself. It might take long, but I'll repair myself. I, I trust that if I focus, if I stay persistent, if I keep trying, I know that it will get better over a period of time. Even if it didn't change physically, I was going to free my mind by accepting that this was where I was at. Still working, but accepting. I hope that helps. And sometimes maybe the easiest way to think about self-acceptance is to think, what would you tell your friend? You know, if you find yourself fighting something in your life, if you had a friend who was going through that exact same situation, what would you tell him? You'd probably say, hey, do your best. Hey, um, trust. Hey, have faith. Hey, believe. Wouldn't you say something like that? You, if they kept fighting against it over and over and over, you'd want them to have some peace about it. And you try to comfort them. So what about giving yourself some peace? What about comforting yourself? What about accepting the fact that, you know, you've probably been doing your best? What about accepting the fact that when you screwed up, you hurt somebody's feeling, you know, you're in a better place now. 
You're older, more mature, more capable now. So maybe another way to think about acceptance isn't just trust, but also forgiveness. Maybe it's time to forgive that time you did that dumb thing. Maybe it's time to forgive that time you, you just hated yourself for doing something. Maybe it's time to let go. I think of self-acceptance in those ways. I think of self-acceptance in understanding that I can engage the process without hating it, in understanding that I'm gonna trust that this is here for a reason to pull the best of me. And I also really think of acceptance as ultimately forgiveness of the things that I did or others did so that now in this moment I can be free because that is the benefit of acceptance. Whether you accept another person you've been arguing with or upset with, and you finally accept that's the way they are or that's how it's going to be. It's freeing because now you don't have to carry along the anger and the upset. You're just like, well, that's the way it is. That's the way they are. Not bitter, not upset, just at a peaceful level to understand, to have empathy, to give compassion and to go, oh, okay, this is all right. I trust that this is all going just like it's supposed to. I'll keep doing my best, but here we go. I think if you can have those lenses on self-acceptance, it becomes a power. And that power gives you freedom, to gives you that peace in the moment and gives you the better choices for tomorrow. And when you have the better choices for tomorrow, you start to experience what we call the charge life. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number four, be more confident with Vanessa Van Edwards. Here's the myth I was told over and over again. Confidence, you either have it or you don't. And no one quite knows how to get it if you don't. This myth is pervasive and damaging. It destroys tiny, fragile, beautiful little buds of confidence before they can grow. And I want your confidence to grow and flourish, and I know it can. Confidence isn't something that arrives at birth. It's a skill, one that can be developed through intentional and purposeful practice. Here's how. Number one, how to look confident. For this video, I'm gonna do something a little different. We're gonna start with the outside in. When it comes to confidence, sometimes it's a faster route. Let's start with your confident looks. And no, I don't mean your clothes or your hair. This tip is all about your body language. Let me ask you a question. When you walk into a networking event or office or restaurant, do you look like a winner? This may seem like a strange question, but research from the University of British Columbia makes it clear. We innately get bigger in our bodies when we feel pride, but get smaller in our bodies when we feel defeated or ashamed. Why does this matter? Without realizing it, when we look at someone, we're trying to decide if they look more like a winner or a loser. Is someone taking up space? Do they have their head held high and their shoulders down and relaxed? Or do they look like a loser with their shoulders rolled in, their chin to their chest, and a slouched position? Without realizing it, we make snap judgments of people the moment we see them, and then put them into one of two buckets. In order to be confident, your body language must show it first. The easiest way to look like a winner is to claim our territory. Own your body and own the space around you by standing or sitting tall. Keep your arms loose by your side. Relax your shoulders down your back and open your chest. These expansive postures will show others that you're confident and sure of yourself. Be wary of low power postures like crossing your arms or turtling your shoulders to your ears, as this may signal defeat. Number two, how to speak confidently. Now that you've learned how to look confident, let's talk about how to sound confident. When you answer the phone and when you start a new conversation, it's crucial that your voice projects confidence. But how? We make our first impression in our hello upon answering the phone. The question is, is your voice helping or hurting your confidence? Here at Science of People, we did a fascinating experiment on vocal power and have some incredible tips for you on how you can make your voice sound better and how to benefit from every single phone conversation. 
We asked participants to record themselves saying hello in six different ways. Normal, hello. Happy, hello. Sad, hello. Angry, hello. Power posing, hello. And normal, hello, again. We added these recordings to our website and asked our readers to tell us how much they liked or didn't like the person in the recording just based on the hello they heard. Readers listened to each clip and selected one of the following answers. I like this person a lot, I like this person a little, or I don't like this person at all. Which version of the hello do you think was the most likable? The winner was the happy hello, of course. The data revealed that the happy recordings received significantly more approval ratings than any other hello. This is a huge finding as it shows people can hear your mood. Which variation do you think did the worst? The angry hello. Action step. Your mood affects your voice. Never, ever answer the phone in a bad mood. And if you have an important call, watch some funny YouTube videos to bring some natural smiles into your face. Number three, does happiness equal confidence? Happiness and confidence go hand in hand. If you're curious about how to be more confident at work, one of the best ways to feel professionally confident is to have meaningfulness in your job. Do you know your company's mission? Do you know the impact of your work? When we don't know how our daily responsibilities contribute to a larger mission, we can feel disengaged or hopeless in our workplace. There is nothing worse than feeling like what you do doesn't matter. Here are some ideas to add meaning to your day. First, find out your company's mission statement. Or if it's your company, create a mission statement. If your company doesn't have one, write the mission statement you think your company should have. Maybe you can even bring it up to your bosses. Second, write your own personal mission statement. Why do you do what you do? Beyond just a paycheck, who are you helping? This could be your colleagues, your team, or your clients. Put this mission statement somewhere easy to see on your desk or hang it on your cubicle wall. Lastly, make a success folder on your computer. This is a folder that contains records of accomplishments, testimonials, and any other example of your rock star status at work. If you're having a bad day, open your success folder to remind yourself of your worth. Action step. Watch all 10 ways to be happier at work to boost your day-to-day -day satisfaction. Number four, how to walk confidently. Did you know your walk can project your confidence? BioMotion Lab analyzes and synthesizes biological motion patterns. A fancy way of saying they study walking and movement for patterns. Biological motion looks at how emotions and intentions can change our walk. The human visual system is highly sensitive to our motion, and without realizing it, we're capable of decoding things about people from their walk. We investigate the question of how such information is encoded in biological motion and how it can be retrieved. They apply linear methods from statistics to patterns to recognition to analysis. They use several variants to show different kinds of walks, from gender to weight to nervousness to happiness. See the differences? Interesting, right? Action step. How do you walk? Film yourself walking and see if you can slide more towards relaxed and happy. See how that changes how you feel. Number five, find a confident role model. Confidence is easier to develop when we can watch and emulate someone in action. Do you have someone in your life who exudes confidence professionally or personally? Maybe a partner, a colleague, or a close friend. Assign them as your confidence role model. This can be a secret role model. You observe and take notes of how they interact. Or you can talk to your role model and ask them to be your mentor. There's no better compliment than telling someone their natural confidence is alluring. This can lead to multiple benefits, including you bonding with them on a deeper level, them sharing ideas on how you can up your individual confidence, and maybe even some insider tips on how they got to their own confidence levels. Not sure who to choose? Look for a role model in the workplace who embodies the following qualities. Shows confidence in their leadership. Isn't afraid to be unique. Communicates and interacts with everyone. Shows respect and concern for everyone they meet. Is knowledgeable and well-rounded. Has humility and shows willingness to admit mistakes. Does good things outside the job. What I love about this list of qualities is that many are unexpected. Confidence comes in multiple flavors. It isn't about being the most extroverted, bubbly person in the room. Sometimes it's about empathy, humility, 
competence. Number six, pump up your confidence. Are you in a funk? When we experience burnout or exhaustion, our confidence tends to dip. A fun option to ramp up your confidence is by creating different kinds of confidence playlists. This can be a Spotify playlist that gets you in a good mood or a YouTube playlist that inspires you. Listen or watch when you're brushing your teeth, getting ready, or on your commute. Anytime you need a pump up. Want to listen to our free audio training? I would love to pump you up. Learn how to stand out from your peers with our praiseworthy performance free audio training. Listen right now at scienceofpeople.com slash praiseworthy. Number seven, overcome imposter syndrome. For many high achievers, success comes at a price, and this price is known as imposter syndrome. This is a psychological phenomenon that causes smart, talented people to feel like a fraud, to feel undeserving of their accomplishments. Studies have found that 70% of all people feel like imposters at one time or another. This is a huge problem. Here's the most important thing to keep in mind. This is not a defect. Imposter syndrome is not a personality trait. It's a reaction to an event. Do you ever think your accomplishments are just not enough or pure luck? Do you ever worry that people will find out that you aren't worthy? This is imposter syndrome at work, and it's temporary and overcomable. When our mind and thoughts work against us, our confidence shrivels up and hides away. One way to fight imposter syndrome is with motivating self-talk. Stop feeling like a fraud with this video. On a more serious note, if you get stressed out in social settings, it's possible you may be suffering from social anxiety. Social anxiety is when you feel nervous, tense, or uncomfortable in social situations because you're worried other people are judging you. Almost everyone has experienced social anxiety at one point or another. Life is rife with moments of self-consciousness, from job interviews to first dates. We all occasionally feel nervous around other people. Unfortunately, social anxiety can become at worst debilitating and at the very least damper our inner confidence and make it feel impossible to be social in an authentic way. The good news is there are ways to overcome your social anxiety with a treatment known as cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. I mention this here because if you're having a more serious issue with confidence, I highly recommend getting professional help. CBT is recognized as one of the most effective treatment options for social anxiety. Think about getting more help and learn more about social anxiety and how to deal in our full video. Number eight, how to spark confidence in your brain. Our thoughts dictate nearly every aspect of our existence, and if our thoughts are insecure or demotivated, it's nearly impossible to think and feel confidently about ourselves. Shad Helmstetter, author of What to Say When You Talk to Yourself, argues that we are programmed by our thoughts. Our mindset and our self-truths are the epicenter of our confidence. Self-truths, the ideas we tell ourselves, the beliefs we carry around, whether they are true or not. What are the stories you tell yourself? What are your truths? And are these factual truths or assumed truths? Many people tell themselves, I'll never be good at sports, or I'm not creative enough, or I could never own my own business. I want you to dig into these truths a bit more. Do you believe this because someone told you that you would never succeed at fill in the blank? Is there a deeper insecurity that contributes to this limiting belief? Go through three of your biggest limiting beliefs and do some fact-checking. Where did they come from? Why? And do you want to keep them bouncing around in your head? Take ownership of the thoughts that only serve you. Number nine, limit social media consumption. We all love a good dog photo on Instagram, right? Well, surmounting research shows that social media is hurting us. The endless comparison we subject ourselves to via this technological vehicle can have lasting and harmful effects. Researcher Clarissa Silva interviewed men and women between the ages of 28 and 73 and found these crazy results. 60% of people using social media reported that it has impacted their self-esteem in a negative way. 50% reported social media having negative effects on their relationships. 80% reported that it's easier to be deceived by others through their sharing on social media. This insecurity is especially rampant in the online dating space. According to Silva, it seems that social media is creating a paradox effect, giving off the illusion of many choices while making it harder to find viable options. The paradox effect in dating is creating the illusion of having more social engagement, social capital, and popularity, but masking one's true persona. 
Remember, there is a big, bright world happening around you. Social media helps to stay connected and informed, but it's also important to find a balance between reality and fantasy. Want to conquer your social media? For every hour you spend on social media in the next month, spend the equivalent time with friends or family in person to balance it out. Here's the bottom line. The path to more confidence is in your hands. Confidence doesn't grow without water, fertilizer, and a little TLC. Take steps, even small ones, to up your confidence and kickstart the life you always wanted. Rule number five, destroy self-doubt with Marie Forleo. If you ever wrestle with self-doubt about, I don't know, what you're writing, what you're creating, I gotta tell you, this is a must-watch episode. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or you read my emails, which you should, then you know I've been working on my next book. And as soon as I started talking about it, I gotta tell you, I got all these questions. People started asking about my writing process, how soon is it gonna be ready, can you tell me more about it? So I wanna start with my writing process. Now, I don't really talk about it much, Because to be honest, it's a proprietary formula. In fact, I've developed it over years, and I keep it under lock and key. (laughs) No. Just kidding. I'll tell you exactly what my writing process is. So my writing process is this intoxicating blend of despair and struggle and agony and total insecurity and overwhelm and panic with some subtle top notes of self-loathing. Ah, yes. This is just like my creative process. I've had this before. Are you sure this isn't my creative process? Anyway, so recently I was working on my book in LA and I was in the midst of feeling all of this angst about my writing. I was totally questioning my capabilities. So I'd gone to work out and I was just leaving Gold's Gym. I got on my bike and I started riding my bike home and this woman was on the sidewalk and she was running past me and then she looked back and did a double take and she said, are are you Marie Forleo? And I was like, yes. I am Marie Forleo, who are you? And she told me her name was Rebecca. She says, I have to tell you something. I love your book, it changed my life. She's like, no really, I'm not just saying this, I'm not blowing smoke up your butt. Your book totally transformed my life. So I'm standing there with my bike all sweaty, almost in tears, and I'm like, Rebecca, well, I have something to tell you. You have no idea how much what you just shared means to me right now in this moment. I mean, the whole reason I'm here in LA is I am working on my next book, and I'm just starting out, and I'm struggling with it each and every day. So to hear you tell me how much my first book meant to you, which is something I never hear anymore, you're like the most beautiful sign from the universe telling me to keep going. So thank you. So here's me and my new friend, Becky, very sweaty and happy on the street in Venice. And if you're not familiar with Miss Becky Lynch, turns out she is a WWE superstar and the inaugural SmackDown Women's Champion. I gotta say, Becky, you are inspiring me to give my writing self-doubt the smackdown. All my whiny little complaints, I wanna just mm, put them in the death grip. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Becky. And two important things I want you to take away from this experience, my, my little story about Becky. So number one, if someone's work means something to you, do not be shy about saying something. I mean, really, I can't tell you how unbelievably grateful I was that Becky did that double take on the street and she said, hey, hey, are you Marie? Her words gave me so much life in the exact moment that I needed them. Now, even if you don't run into folks on the street, don't underestimate the power of just saying something, whether you write them an email or you send a little handwritten note or a card, whatever. You know, Most of us don't realize how much people that we might consider to be creative superstars, those people struggle with the same exact fears and doubts and insecurities that we have. And you just never know when your words can help someone else really change their day or their week or their entire life. 
And number two, this is really important. If you're feeling insecure about what you have to share, whether it's your message or your writing or your product or your service, and you're debating about whether or not you should put it out there, you need to remember. I know I say this every week, but you got to hear it. The world really does need that special gift that only you have. It needs your ideas and your message and your story because what you have to offer could really change someone else's life. And that person needs to hear it from you. And guess what? They might only be able to hear it from you. You just don't know the pain or the struggle that somebody else might be battling with that you could help with. You never know if just by being brave enough to speak up and share what you do and who you are, the impact that you can have on another human being's life. Now, I got to say, if writing is one of the ways that you hope to help people, but maybe you're feeling a little stuck or a little unsure of how to express your unique voice, you have got to get your butt over to thecopycure.com right this second. Now, yes, we do have this full-on writing course, and you can sign up for that if you want. But honestly, the sample class and the email series that you get for free, it is so damn good. Frankly, I think everybody on the planet should just go sign up for the free stuff. And I promise you, the tips that you'll learn and everything that you'll get from that free series will help you become a stronger, more confident writer starting right now. And if you ever, ever doubt the difference that you can make to others just by being brave and sharing what's in your heart, I want you to remember this tweetable. One kind word can change someone's day. A few kind words can change their whole life. Rule number six, become unstoppable with John Asraf. Here's a question for you. Have you ever thought to yourself that you're not smart enough or that you're not good enough or that you don't have the knowledge or the skills to achieve your biggest goals and dreams? I can share with you that I used to have those exact thoughts and beliefs about myself. Now, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can start to have unstoppable confidence and certainty in yourself so you can become a powerhouse, a person who can not just set goals, but achieve whatever goals you choose in your life. Now, many years ago, when I was on the Ellen DeGeneres show, I was in the green room with Minnie Driver. And Minnie Driver is a Hollywood celebrity who everybody knows around the world if you watch a little bit of television. And I asked Minnie a question. I asked her, how is it that you can take a script that your agent gives you and how do you become the role so that you can either win an Academy Award or an Oscar or any of the awards that they give actors and actresses? And she said to me, she said, John, nobody's really ever asked me that question. And so let me share with you what she told me that I think will help you understand what it's going to take for you to not just set goals, but for you to achieve your goals. She said to me that once she gets the script, she reads it three, four, five times to see if it's really what she wants to trade her life for. Then she says when she accepts the script, and the contract that her agent obviously connects her with, the studios with, she then goes by a process of practice, drill, and rehearse. And what does that mean? Well, what it means is she takes hours every single day to practice her role in the script. She does research on the role. And then once she thinks, then feels that she has the role really well felt, in her emotional self, she then moves that to the camera. Now, why does that process work? Well, the reason the process works is because when we have a goal that we look at once or twice or three times, our brains really forget what the goals are unless we get it to go from the conscious, aware part of our personality and our psyche and into the unconscious, implicit part of our brain and psyche. Through rehearsal, through practiced repetition, through practiced drilling and rehearsing every single day, what you do is you set up a new neural pathway in your brain, a new pattern for your brain to not only emotionalize, but a new pattern for your brain 
to have you think about, a new pattern for your brain to have you look for, a new pattern for your brain to get your physical body to move into action towards. And so if you want to achieve your goals and dreams, write out your script and then every single day, what I want you to do is read the script, visualize and see yourself already being in the role, having achieved what you want to achieve instead of just having the goal written on a piece of paper. What I want you to also do is I want you to practice being that role. If your role is about being healthier, then I want you to visualize it, I want you to read it, I want you to look at whatever you've written or whatever you have cut out in a magazine or from any other source to be able to create a collage of that goal or that dream that you have for yourself. And then every day I want you to take action towards that and practice that role until you and the goal and the dream become one. You have to go from the I want part to the I am part. And the more you can bridge the gap between what you want and who you are, the more you'll be able to create an Academy Award winning performance in your own life. The more you integrate your vision with your emotions, with your actions, the more you will become the role, the more you will become the person who sets goals and achieves goals. If you do what most people do, You'll set goals and never really emotionalize them. You'll set goals and never really take actions consistently towards them. But if you thought about becoming a Hollywood actor or actress and you were gonna be paid a million or five million or ten million dollars to be that role, guess what you would do? You'd practice, you'd drill, and you'd rehearse in private and in public so that you and your goal become one. And that's when you start to act and think and feel every single day the way you need to act and think and feel until you achieve your goals and dreams. I'm rule number seven, the last one before some very special bonus clips is... Eliminate things that hold you back. With Dean Graziosi. Today I want to talk about confidence. I could talk about confidence literally once a week because it's so important to your next level of success. If you're watching this video, excuse me, I just left the gym. I'm sweaty. I'm, I'm freaking, my face is red, didn't shave today, but I don't care. I got a message. I was, literally was running on the Stairmaster, walking on the Stairmaster, sweating, thinking about you guys and thinking about the impact of confidence in your life. I just did an event this weekend in San Diego. It was an amazing group of people and I went deep on confidence. I watched people get it. You see, if you are listening to this podcast, you're listening to other podcasts that motivate you, give you capabilities to go faster, quicker, make more money, have more freedom, control in your life, all those types of things. But none of it, listen to me, listen to this clearly, maybe for the first time in your life, really hear me. None of it is possible if your confidence is down. So I want you to think about the things in your life that steal your confidence. And remember, when I say steal your confidence, I don't mean that you have 100% of confidence and you do something and you go to 20% or 10%. I'm talking about when your confidence is off just 5%, do you make smart decisions? When your confidence is down, do you go after the business? Do you ask for the money? Do you start the, the website? Do you, do you uh, get the girl? Do you get the promotion? Do you ask your boss for a raise? Now when your confidence is down, you that's when you start saying, well, maybe this is good enough. Maybe my relationship is good enough. I should just be happy with what I got. I should just be happy with the money I make. Screw that. If you were happy, you wouldn't be here. You'd be doing something else right now besides listening or watching me. So let's just face the facts. Where you are right now is not sufficient for you. Doesn't mean it's horrible, but it's not enough. And if you want to get to that next level, you need to protect your confidence by any shape, measure, or form, protect it. So, what are the things that ding your confidence? I realized at an early, early time, it's probably been 10 years, that watching the news for me, when I watch the news and I see that it looks like the world is going to hell in a handbasket or what the president is saying today or what Congress is saying or you listen to the left or the right or, or people in the middle, if you listen to all the gun violence and all, like all the news does for me is make me question where the world is going in my next level. So for 10 years now, I've been on a news diet. I don't watch the news. I have no clue what's going on, nor do I care. It was the biggest transformation in my life. 
I, where I want to spend my time, I want to spend time with my family, the people I love, my kids, my team members. They deserve the best of me. They don't deserve Dean at 95% confidence. They deserve 100%. And if I watch the news, it, it brings it down so I won't be the best team leader. I won't be the best father. I won't be the best man I can be. I won't be the best uh, inspiration for you. So screw the news. It dings my confidence. It's out. I've been on a news diet. I challenge you to do the same thing. For me, I don't know about you, but if, if you have your phone, I'm recording on my phone here, I'm stopped now, I can talk to you. Um, but I don't know, this is my wallet, but if you ever look at your phone, if it dings, someone texts you or calls you and you look at it and you go, oh, should I answer this now? Should I answer it later? To me, that robs my confidence. I don't want those people in my life. I either have to set boundaries or I have to push them out of my life. Listen, let's just be honest. Stop feeling bad for other people. Stop dimming your glow. Stop talking about your aspirational next level. Stop fantasizing about your dreams in front of people because it may insult them or make them feel inferior or they may tell you you're a dreamer. If that's the case, push them out of your life or become Teflon and don't listen to their sh and, and plain speaking, if, you, if someone gives you advice, if you wouldn't replace your life with theirs, they give you advice on how to make money, how to fix your relationship, how to get a promotion. But most of the time people are unqualified giving us advice. The broke friend telling us how to make money. The unhappy, miserable, single friend telling us how to fix our marriage. Bad advice is the most costly advice in the world, but I take it one step deeper. You've heard that before, but bad advice to me dings my confidence. It's got to go. So if, if, if bad advice dings your confidence, then get the push the people out that are bringing you down and making you dim your glow, push them out of your life, or if they're really close in your life, find a way to not let their words affect you unless you'd rather be them. Another thing that dings your confidence in a massive way is working on your weaknesses. The biggest lie we've ever been told in the history of the world, or one of them, is that we should get strong at what we're weak at. The hell with that Get amazing at what you're good at because when you work on the things you're good at, the things that make you thrive and feel alive, your confidence goes up. When your confidence goes up, then everything else starts to get easier. You don't look at things as a problem, you look at things as a challenge. When you walk into the meeting to ask for the promotion, ask for the raise, ask for the partnership, you don't go, oh my God, will this work? Maybe I should be happy. You go, no, I got this. I got this. Your chest puffs up. Your physiology changes. Your breathing changes. The way you look on your face changes. Do you ever take a picture when you're stressed and your confidence is low? It's like, ah, yeah, uh, hi. And then all of a sudden you look at another picture it's like, wow, I looked amazing in that picture. Why did I look so good? Because your confidence was up. So right now, this is your call to action. And by the way, if you haven't yet, go to subscribe to dean.com. Subscribe to dean.com so you can follow me, get notifications, get free free bonuses, get discounts, all kinds of cool stuff. And that's why these podcasts are growing so fast because of all of you registering. But this week, what I want you to do is I would like you to start making a list. Yeah, I'm giving you an assignment. Don't stop just listening to podcasts and start doing Listen, I, I failed miserably in my life, but I've had massive success. I'm sharing this with you today so you can avoid the potholes, so you can avoid, avoid the pitfalls, so you can go faster to your next level. Why go through your own trial and error when I've been here? So do this exercise. Don't just think about it. Don't just be inspired. Do it this week. Start writing down everything in your life that makes you feel a little bit less than confident. Someone in your life, a relationship, watching the news, working on your weaknesses, uh, redundant work, negative people, wh whatever it is, start recognizing it and start eliminating those things in your life. Start figuring out how you could push them out or become Teflon or switch it or adjust it or go on a one week news diet. Just go this week without watching one bit of news and use that time that you'd watch the news or surf online looking at stupid crap that doesn't do anything for your life. Use that time working on you. Read a book. Read Powerful by Peggy McCall. Read Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Read Principles by Ray Dalio. Read something that takes you forward and eliminate the crap that holds you back. Self-confidence comes from doing difficult things. Self-confidence, self-love, self-respect, it all comes from deciding to do something difficult. Here's what happens when, when something hard comes up and you find a reason why you can't do it. It's too hard, it's too difficult, it's too scary. Most people will let you off the hook. The people around you will say, yeah, yeah, that's way too hard. I mean, the fact you even thought about it was crazy. You let yourself off the hook. 
But then you realize, ah, I, I could have done it. You know, like that's the worst feeling in the world that you could have done something, but then you came up with an excuse as to why you can't. And that will eat you up. And even if the world lets you off the hook, recognize that they have lower standards than you. Recognize that the people who are giving you that advice and patting you on the back and saying it's okay, you, you don't need to do it. They don't like their life either. They're stuck. They're trapped. They're not pushing hard. They're not being aggressive for their goals. They're not tough either. And we're reinforcing that comfort loop. Every day, comfort you versus growth you are in a fight. <laughs> There's a war going on inside you. Comfort you versus growth you. Comfort Evan versus growth Evan. Every day there's a fight, there's a battle, there's a war going on. And you need to decide who's going to win the fight. It's a daily thing. And the more growth you wins against comfort you, the more you start to grow. The more you start to hit your goals, the more you start to have an impact, the more you start to love yourself. Because again, even if the world would let you off the hook, you know it's just an excuse. I think most people think of it as a giant step that you have to take to build that self-confidence. It's not. I think it's much more about the daily battles with yourself that then builds up to major things. Just like you don't go to the gym and, and lift 400 pounds, you start by lifting 5 pounds or 10 pounds or 20 pounds or 40 pounds, whatever it is. That's how you start to build the muscle. It's much more about the daily building of the muscle to show yourself who you are much more than the one-off heroic moments. Here's an example. So uh, yesterday we had an insane snowstorm here in Toronto. I don't know if we can, uh, it's kind of blurry, you can't see. We had, I can see some here behind me. It's like, look, see that mountain of snow behind me? We had an insane snowstorm. We had probably the worst snowstorm in Toronto, Canada, in a decade. I have not seen this much snow in a crazy amount of time. And so I'm going for a walk, uh, rucking, and rucking is where you carry a backpack. So I'm carrying a backpack of 20 pounds as I'm walking, doing my normal walk. And it's it's crazy outside. Normally the rucking alone is hard enough and I just increased the weight in the backpack. Now, I, there's no path to walk on. And this morning I was walking through an area and there was zero path. The snow is up to my knees and I need to get through. So what's, what are my options? Well, I could, I could complain and turn around, <laughs> right? Like, oh, I could look out the window and say, ah, oh, so much snow. I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'll do it when there's less snow, you know? And then the next day there's less snow. There's still snow and the next day there's still snow. And then all of a sudden you just give up on the habit, right? Like you let yourself off the hook to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And then, and then you never do it. And then the habit's gone. And that's what you're teaching yourself. This is why it leads to identity. This is why it leads to negative self-worth and negative self-confidence because the next time you come up with an idea, you've already reinforced the training. You're training yourself that when you come up with an idea, you don't do the thing. When you say you're going to do it and you're going to start tomorrow and then you don't, the next time you come up with an idea, guess what? You, you, you've already reinforced the pattern. Like, I don't follow through. I'm not going to do that. I'm excited today, but tomorrow I won't follow through. So there's a snow. It's up to my knees right up to my knees and I'm six one so it's it's some serious snow like I gotta walk through not quite that that's that's probably taller than me uh, I don't have to walk through that much but but up to my knees I'm looking at it and I've got to go I don't know a hundred meters through this thing and initially my thought was oh, man, why is there no path why is nobody shoveled this why is nobody snow blow this? Like, I gotta get over there. I got a backpack on, I'm rucking, I'm sweating like crazy, I'm already exhausted. Now I gotta go through this. This is when we need to catch ourselves, right? Everybody would have let me off the hook. And an another me would have let me off the hook, right? Comfort Evan would have let growth Evan off the hook. So it's okay, go back home or f go the long way around where there's a path. Don't go through that snow up to your knees. And as soon as I caught it, now what? Most of the time you won't catch it. Most of the time you'll just do, you'll do the automatic thing. And usually the automatic thing is, is the comfort thing. So usually play small by default. Usually you, you'll look outside and see the snow and not go. Just by default, not even catching the, the conversation with yourself. But when you catch it, this is a really important moment. 
what do you do? Do you do the difficult thing or do you do the comfort thing? Because when you catch it and you make a conscious choice, this is how we start to either change our identity or reinforce our identity. So I looked at it, I caught it and I said, I'm going through, let's go. You know, I caught the negative thinking, I caught the comfort Evan coming over, walk around, go home. Nope, not happening. We're going through. We are going through. We are going to make it through. <laughs> and it was rough. You know, I'm walking through, I'm freezing. Uh, I'm taking one kind of giant step at a time. Snow is getting all through my boots, all down my legs. I, I almost slip and fall. I have a coffee that I, that I picked up. Uh, it's dripping all over the place. And in my head, as I'm going through it, it's like, this is the best. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Evan. You got this, man. Let's go. You do difficult things. That's the thing on repeat in my head. Combined with that, I'm also telling myself that, you know what? Not only am I doing this difficult thing for me, I'm also creating a path for other people that the next person who comes up against this 100 meters or so, that now they will have not an easy time, but an easier time of crossing the same path so that they can get across. So it's going to service. If you're ever having a hard time getting yourself to do something, it's one, you do difficult things, remind yourself, and two, default to service, that it's not just about you, it's for other people. Now, that may not even be true. Maybe nobody ever comes across that path. Maybe I didn't make it easier for the next person. Maybe somebody comes five minutes after me and snow blows the whole thing, and so there was zero service. It doesn't matter. It's the story that I'm telling myself that it will serve other people that will get you to then do the difficult thing. So in order to make it happen, there's two triggers that I use. One is language. So scary, difficult or hard. If you say those things, if you feel those things, if you text those things, if you write those things, if you're talking to yourself and you catch those things, then you have to do it. You can no longer accept scary, difficult or hard as reasons for you not to do the thing. Because your great life is on the other side of scary, difficult, hard. Everything you want, the business you want, the relationships you want, the health that you want, everything, everything, your great life. If you wrote down a list of everything you want out of life, everything on that list comes on the other side of you doing scary, difficult, and hard things. Growth you, that's growth you, fighting, comfort you. So when you catch yourself saying, speaking, writing, thinking, scary, difficult, or hard, that's a, that's a trigger. It should be a trigger. It's a trigger for me. It should be a trigger for you to go and do it. Do it. Go. Walk through the giant snow. And you might be thinking, well, how does that help me with my business? It's just walking through snow and I'm going to be cold and have snow in my boots. How does that help me? It's an identity thing. Because as soon as you start to teach yourself that you're the kind of person who follows through on those scary, difficult, hard things, then the next time that shows up anywhere in your life, in your business, in your relationships, in your health, anything that actually helps you accomplish your goals, you're going to be ready to show up for it. You're going to be more likely to actually do the thing because you've been training and conditioning yourself to do the thing. That's why walking through 100 meters of snow matters. So the first is scary, difficult, hard. Those are verbal cues or, or thought cues. The second is the boom, boom, boom test where your heart is beating quickly. It's like, when your heart is going crazy like that, it's usually because you should be doing something. You're afraid, right? Now, don't again go, don't go, don't go standing on the highway uh, because it's scary and it makes your heart race, right? Don't be stupid. But most of the things that you're afraid of aren't actually things that are going to be life threatening, right? They're not. They're usually it's other people's opinions. Usually you're afraid of not failing, but somebody watching you fail, right? You're going to fail at something. Who's going to see you? That's what we're actually afraid of. And that cannot be a good enough reason. It can't. Not anymore. If you're afraid of losing in front of somebody, if you're afraid of other people's opinions, if you are living your life based off of the expectations and judgment of other people, you will never do anything great. You will never live your great life because somebody always has a plan for what you should be doing with your life. You will never please everybody. It's not possible. You have to start to learn to please yourself. And it's not doing something just to show off and just to prove somebody wrong. I'm not a big fan of, of tapping into that energy. The reason to do something is not to prove somebody wrong or make somebody else look stupid. 
the reason to do something is because that's who you are and that's what you want to do. And so learning to do difficult things, teaching yourself step by step, brick by brick, one snow uh, storm at a time, <laughs> teaching yourself that will change your life. You deserve a better life. You deserve a great life. And that comes on the other side of you doing the things that are scary, difficult, and hard. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want to have a purposeful life with confidence, check the video right there next to us. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and we'll see you there. In today's environment, you need to be flexible. You need to listen um, and uh, be able to pivot and change really fast. Belief, innovation, and resourcefulness will take you everywhere. Uh, okay, this is going to show my brilliance, Evan. You ready for the deep?